So, hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about the rehabilitation in sports and the stages of rehabilitation. What is rehabilitation? Rehabilitation is the restoration of the ability to function in a normal or near normal manner following an injury. What is the purpose for rehabilitation? Rehabilitation usually involves reducing pain and swelling and restoring the range of motion and increasing strength with the use of manual therapy, massage, manipulation, therapeutic methods such as ultrasound and an exercise program. If a sports person does not rehabilitate their injury effectively, they are much more likely to sustain another injury to the same area. There is an hierarchical model for a progressive model of rehabilitation. Here, as we can see, it is it has been a time duration of up to a week to several years, starting with the physical examination, then moving on to control the swelling, control the pain, restore integrity, open the tissue, restore range of motion. Restore control of volitional contraction and restoring the strength and duration. And restore reflex reaction. Then restore control of complex function movements. Then at final stage, that is return to the functional activities, the return to specific scores. Immediate treatment. The more immediate the treatment, the better the outcome and the shorter the recovery time. Unfortunately, many performers delay seeking medical advice and continue to treat with an injury. Many performers delay their medical advice. They think that they're fit, they have no severe injury, so they just can't seek the medical advice and continue to with the training with an injury, which is harmful. This then exacerbates the situation and lenders the recovery time. Used to return of a performer to their pre-injury fitness. The time varies with an injury time. <coughs> it usually compromises of five phases. Focusing on a progressive approach. So, moving on to the stages of rehabilitation. In phase one, the medical manager with the focus placed on pain relief, swelling reduction, and protected mobilization. In the stage one, we usually assess the patient, we examine the patient, and the, then we move on to the treatment part. In phase two, phase two. Focus on restoring range of motion, non weight bearing exercises, then moving on to the phase 3 flexibility and restoration of the strength. Initially, start with isometric exercises, then isotonic with no load, then on to proprioceptive exercises. Phase 4 that is, retain sports specific movement pattern and improve coordination and agility. This we do by quick movements. We can use plyometrics and the coordination exercises. Moving on to the phase 5 that is return to their specific training or return to sport. Phase 1 predefined prevent swelling, protect, control bleeding, relieve pain. We can apply cold compression, elevation and rest, priced as well. In phase 2, we control the bleeding, relieve the pain, protect and advise. Priced. We are going to discuss this earlier, uh, later on. Moving on to the phase 3. Absorption of swelling, removal of debris, growth of a new vessel, development of scar tissue, contrast bathing, elevation, massage, passive exercises. In phase 4, if there is no swelling, no inflammation, some range of motion or ability to undertake weight bearing. In phase 4, we usually advise a uh, range of motion that too passive one. 
an ability to wait pair these five may improve the balance coordination skills agility plyometrics and movement here are the stages the stage one is the accident we immediately stop uh, stop the activity we assess the casualty we see the mechanism of injury we see the mode of onset of the injury we apply salt tapes and prized as appropriate we see the sign and symptoms of the injury example blood after correct position or is it a open fracture etc we usually apply prized in an acute injury sport area treat for shock keeping the knee or area warm reassure and send for the help next up prized what is prized prized is stand stand for speed protect the injury from the further injury r for rest the injury and discontinue the activity i ice pack should be applied to the injured side to help reduce swelling and pain c stand for compression general pressure should be applied which can help to stop fluid to seeping into the injured side e stand for elevation the injured side should be supported and be put into a raised position above the heart d stand for diagnosis should be done by a professional so that the correct evaluation of treatment is followed next up is salt tapes the quicker the injury is treated the quicker the chance of making an improved recovery and the faster the rehabilitation phase treatment can start by using salt tapes in salt tapes a stand for see the injury occur we see the injury we ask for the mode of injury mechanism of injury biomechanics of trauma then we ask the casualty what is wrong and where then we look for signs if there is a bleeding there is some contusion if there is a deformity inflammation swelling etc t stand for touch the injury or close the injury for signs of heart tenderness pain a stand for active movement ask them to move the injury through range of motion if there is a firm and feel if there is some tightness P stand for the passive movement. Try to move the injured side only if a good range of movement is available. S stand for strength. If they have moved through the steps above with little or no pain, then ask them to stand unaided, then running and walking. Moving on to the stage two, that is an emergency or the professional treatment and the respiratory. At the hospital, we examine the patient by X-ray, MRI. The treatment depends on the severity of the accident or the trauma. Ranges from surgery, manipulation, close reduction, strapping, plaster cast, sling, crutches, a combination of these. To reduce the inflammation, to repair, to provide support. After care, it could include painkillers, rest, maintain circulation by encouraging small movements, non weight bearing in area. and to immobilize immobilize the site of injury in early phases immobilization is very important as to heal the injured site the period could last up to two weeks or months depending on the damage then check prior to cast remove etc moving on to the stage 3 a little bit later we increase the range of motion passively after stitches sling bandages cast etc have been removed the area will be stiff sore weak there will be tightness reduce muscle strength your general fitness will also be reduced as not as much exercise depending on the injury example wrist you can still walk maintain general health you will attend hospital check and be referred to a physiotherapist as an appropriate then the physiotherapist will give you a progression through increasing your range of motion then strength then the muscle power to increase the range of motion physiotherapy by manipulation and encouragement of additional pain up movement stretches bubble board heat water treatment etc 
can include exercises at home, ex example, therapy, painkillers, and necessary throughout the piece. Passive and dynamic stretches can be followed. Moving on to the stage four, which is strengthening activities, it must be after the range of motion is better. If physiotherapist get the firm and feel, he immediately turns the patient for strengthening activities and power pulling. Exercise training specific to the injury to strengthen the area. Now it can move in a normal range. Research and give suggestion. Explain how the exercise gradually become harder. Use own body weight then small weights. Suppose do push ups, squats rather than putting up on weights and doing the exercise. In acute state, the body weight exercises are important and it progressively we can add on the weights. It will be more challenging. Importance of achieving small targets, seeing progress to motivate psychologically, the patient must be considered throughout. Additional, not specific to injury, general fitness should, which should be reduced due to not training. Stage 5 which is back into training. Return to training, gradual increase, coach aware, build up confidence, avoid similar situation, example tackles until fully better. It is very important to know the biomechanics of sports. So, so that we can figure out how to jump, how to tackle, how to get on the perfect landing, how to secure and protect our body. Injured sports person to tape bandages area to protect and support, be aware of limitation. Gradual increase in amount of work could return to sport. Gradually, example, use drills and increase general fitness. We improve agility. We increase across training to improvise endurance, stamina with the proper technique. The aim is to continue progress and not to repeat the injury. The conclusion is, depending on the injury, how good the first aid treatment and later treatment, recovery can take different amount of time. It varies with individual sports. Some athletes take a longer to recover, may have recurrent problems or secondary issues, reinfections, etc. Attitude motivation is also an issue. Once they have paused in their training, they will also need to get it fit again. Reversibility of fitness. The final stage is the return to sport phase. The fully recovered and back in training and back into the activities. Coach should be aware to improve, develop the confidence of the player. Support can be worn to help support and give confidence. Player can use as a substitution initially to gradually get back into full fitness. Here we can see the hierarchy of rehabilitation goals. What are our major goals? Again, physical examination, control of swelling, control of pain, to restore the range of motion, to restore the contractions, then to restore the strength and endurance, and to restore reflexes, then to restore the control and complex functional movement, then the return to the functional activity. Then moving on, the pattern of motion that use multiple joints acting with various axes and in multiple planes. Essential part of rehabilitation that places tissues under stresses that return tissues to level of full activity. Places, stresses, and forces on each body system. Traditionally, rehabilitation techniques often stress only single joint and single plane of motion. Here, functional progression, the succession of activities that simulate actual motor and sport skill that enables the patient to acquire or reacquire the skill needed to perform activity must be able to adapt rehab to the sport specific demands and specific position.
clinician breaks down the activities into individual components. The patient can focus on each specific part of an activity. The benefits of using functional progression. The functional progression helps the patient to reach goal of the entire program. Our main goal of functional progression are to restore the joint range of motion, to restore the strength, to restore the proprioception, to restore the agility, to restore the confidence. It provides both physiological and psychological benefits to the patient. Next up, the sports injury prevention. Anyone who has been injured before will know that the best cure is prevention. There is some general advice that you can follow in order to eliminate some risk factors. Also make sure an old injury has completely recovered before working out again. If needed to consult your doctor or physiotherapist before you start again. First, warm up properly. Do not start cold. Do some simple muscular exercises after you have been running or exercising for a while and stretch your arms and legs until you loosen up. Use the proper technique as I said earlier that the biomechanics in sports is very important to use a proper technique to know the proper mechanics. Learn the proper way to move during your sports or activity. Different type of exercises require different stances and postures. For example, in some sports, bending your knees at the right time can help avoiding an injury. Suppose we are landing in basketball, your spine, your hips, use the proper gears, make sure your shoes are comfortable, fit well, when you're wearing warm, dry clothing and well-fitting socks, if you need protection or if you have weak bones, make sure ankles and knees are well protected by strapping, tape, or bandages. Remember to wear safety gear depending on the sport. This may mean knee or wrist pad or a helmet. Do not overdo it after an injury or during recovery. Do not do too much too soon. Pace yourself and build up your strength again slowly. If you feel a twinge of pain where you have been injured before, take a break. Always give your muscles a chance to recover between workout sessions. Don't pack a week's worth of activity into a day or two. Try to maintain a moderate level of activity throughout the week. Modify your activities as necessary. Increase your exercise level gradually. Don't overdo it. When starting, check out the concept of graded activities. Accept and respect your body's limit. You may not be able to perform at the same level you did 10 or 20 years ago. Then the cool down phase. Remember to cool down after your activity. Usually this involves doing the same stretching and exercises involved in warm up. Resume the activity slowly. Don't be tempted to nurse your injury for too long. Excessive rest may delay healing. After the initial 48 hours period of the rise, you can start using heat to help relax the tighten muscle. We take things slowly and ease big into exercise for your sport of choice. Develop a fitness plan. Strive for a total body workout consisting of cardiovascular strength, training, and flexibility, exercise, Cross training, for example, reduces injury while promoting total fitness. This will help decrease your chances of getting injuries. So the conclusion is, if we have been through a proper rehabilitation, we have followed the proper stages of rehabilitation, rehabilitation we can eliminate the chances of recurrent injuries. We can get a better return to play. We may find the the casualty will improve with the strength, with the stamina and can perform and play better in their respective sport. This is all in about the stages of rehabilitation. Thank you.